Victor Schauberger grew up surrounded by the untamed beauty of the Alps, where the air hummed with the songs of birds and the rush of crystal clear streams. Unlike most children of his time, Victor didn't dream of conquering nature. He wanted to understand it. His father, Leopold, a stern but wise forester, taught him to observe the silent rhythms of the forest, the way trees leaned into the wind, the dance of leaves in a storm, and the mysterious spirals of water in mountain creeks. As a child, Victor was captivated by water. He'd spend hours lying by a stream, watching how it carved gentle curves through the earth, how it seemed to pulse with life. One day, at the age of nine, he saw something that would change him forever. A trout, motionless in a raging current, suddenly darted upstream with impossible speed, defying the torrent. How does it do that? He whispered to himself, unaware that this question would define his life. His father, noticing his son's obsession, said, Nature doesn't fight itself, Victor. It flows. These words became his mantra. And so, with the forest as his teacher, Victor's path began to take shape leading him toward a discovery that would challenge the very foundations of engineering. In 1885, in the remote village of Holzschlag, Upper Austria, a boy was born into a family of foresters whose roots stretched back 400 years. Victor Schauberger grew up surrounded by the untamed beauty of the Alps, where the air hummed with the songs of birds and the rush of crystal clear streams. Unlike most children of his time, Victor didn't dream of conquering nature. He wanted to understand it. His father, Leopold, a stern but wise forester, taught him to observe the silent rhythms of the forest, the way trees leaned into the wind, the dance of leaves in a storm, and the mysterious spirals of water in mountain creeks. Victor's education was anything but traditional. While his older brothers pursued university degrees in Vienna, he refused to follow. They come back with minds full of formulas, but blind to the forest, he once said. Instead, he apprenticed as a forester, learning from the land itself. By his teens, he could predict a storm by the rustle of leaves or find a hidden spring by the scent of damp earth. But it was water, its movement, its patterns, its secrets, that called to him. He began sketching spirals and vortices, convinced that water held a power humanity had overlooked. His early years as a forest warden were marked by quiet observation. He studied how streams carved their own paths, how they seemed to breathe with purpose. Unlike his peers, who saw nature as a resource to exploit, Victor saw it as a teacher. His sketches of water's spirals grew more intricate, filling notebooks with designs that would later become the blueprint for his inventions. This deep connection to the natural world set the stage for a breakthrough that would stun the engineering community. By 1922, Victor, now in his thirties, faced a challenge that would test his understanding of nature. The forests of Brunnenthal Steierling, owned by Prince Adolf von Schaumburg Lippe, were rich with timber, but the steep, inaccessible mountains made transporting logs to the sawmill costly and dangerous. Traditional flumes, straight concrete channels, often jammed damaged logs or eroded the landscape. Engineers scoffed at the idea of a better solution but Victor saw an opportunity to apply what he'd learned from water's natural flow. He remembered the trout and the snake he'd seen as a child, how they moved with the current, not against it. Water wants to spiral, he told a skeptical colleague, force it straight, and it fights back. Ignoring the hydrologist's textbooks, Victor designed a flume that mimicked a river's meanders. Its wooden channels curved gently, with a cross-section like the blunt end of an egg, he insisted on using cold, fresh water, believing it carried more life force. Most radical of all, he installed water exchange stations to replace tired water with fresh, cool water from nearby springs. When the flume was completed, the results were astonishing. Heavy oak and beech logs, some over two feet thick, floated effortlessly on a mere foot of water, twisting like snakes as they descended. The flume transported timber at a fraction of the cost, with no jams or damage. News spread across Austria, Bavaria and Yugoslavia, where Victor built more flumes. Hydrologists, humiliated by a self-taught forester, called it a fluke. But Victor knew it was no accident, it was nature's design at work. Yet this triumph came with a shadow as the very success he achieved began to harm the land he loved. Success came at a cost. The prince, dazzled by profits, began clear-cutting forests, 
stripping the land Victor loved. Heartbroken, Victor resigned. I gave them a tool to heal the forest, and they used it to wound it, he later wrote. This betrayal only deepened his resolve, pushing him to explore water's secrets, not just for practical gain, but to protect the natural world he cherished. Victor's disillusionment marked a turning point. No longer content to solve practical problems, he vowed to use his inventions to safeguard the environment. He began to see himself not just as an inventor, but as a guardian of the Earth's lifeblood, water. His notebooks filled with ideas for machines that could harness water's energy without harming the planet, setting the stage for his most ambitious work yet. This shift in purpose drove him to uncover the hidden power of water's natural motion, a discovery that would redefine his legacy. By the late 1920s, Victor Schauberger was no longer just a forester. He was a visionary on a mission to redefine humanity's relationship with water. He believed water wasn't merely H2O, a lifeless compound to be pumped through pipes or dammed for power. Water is the blood of the earth, he wrote, and like blood, it carries life. His observations led to a radical theory. Water's natural motion, spiraling, vortical flow, was the key to its vitality and power. Victor's study of vortices began with the trout he'd seen as a child. He noticed that fish in fast-moving streams used tiny flicks of their tails to create miniature whirlpools, which propelled them forward with minimal effort. Rivers, too, formed vortices in their bends, and even the Earth's atmosphere swirled in cyclones. The vortex is nature's engine, he declared. Unlike the explosive heat-generating technologies of the Industrial Revolution, vortices were implosive, cooling, and efficient. They drew energy inward, concentrating it without waste. To test his ideas, Victor built small-scale models. He created spiral pipes that mimicked a river's curves and observed how water flowed faster and clearer through them compared to straight pipes. He patented a braking barrier system to redirect river flow, reducing erosion by guiding water into natural spirals. In 1930, he developed a device to produce living water, water restructured by vortical motion to mimic mountain springs. Tests showed this water improved crop yields and even tasted fresher, though scientists dismissed it as pseudoscience. Despite the skepticism, Victor's results spoke for themselves, paving the way for an invention that could have changed the world. In the 1930s, Victor Schauberger turned his attention to energy production. The world was addicted to coal, oil, and explosives, technologies that burned hot, polluted the air, and scarred the earth. Victor believed there was a better way, implosion, the opposite of explosion. Explosion tears apart, implosion builds up, he explained. His goal was to create an engine that harnessed water's vortical energy, producing clean, sustainable power. The centerpiece of his vision was the trout turbine, later called the home power generator. Inspired by the fish that had fascinated him since childhood, the turbine used spiral pipes to accelerate water into a high-speed vortex. Air was drawn into the center, creating a suction effect that drove a rotor. Unlike traditional turbines, which relied on pressure and heat, this device operated at low temperatures with minimal friction. Victor claimed it could generate electricity from just a small stream, enough to power a household. He also developed the Repulsine, a disc-shaped device that used air and water vortices to create lift. Early prototypes reportedly hovered a few feet off the ground, vibrating with a strange hum. Witnesses described the Repulsine as alive, its spirals mimicking the galaxies above. Victor patented these designs, but detailed blueprints are scarce, fueling speculation about their true capabilities. Yet, as his inventions promised a brighter future, the darkness of war loomed threatening to twist his dreams into nightmares. The 1930s were a dark time for Europe, and Victor Schauberger's life was no exception. In 1934, he was summoned to Berlin to meet Adolf Hitler, who had heard of the water wizard through an industrialist. Hitler, intrigued by Victor's log flumes and turbines, saw potential for weaponizing his technology. Your engines could power the Reich, he said. Victor, horrified, refused to cooperate. I build to heal, not to destroy, he replied. The meeting ended abruptly, but the Nazis didn't forget him. By 1944, as the war turned against Germany, Victor's situation grew dire. 
Drafted into the SS under threat of death, he was sent to the Mauthausen concentration camp, not as a prisoner, but as a forced laborer designing experimental engines. The conditions were horrific, and Victor, already in his late fifties, suffered physically and emotionally. He worked on a refined repulsine, rumored to be part of a secret Nazi project for advanced aircraft. Some speculate these prototypes inspired post-war UFO sightings, though evidence is thin. The war left Victor broken, but his spirit endured, driving him to rebuild in a world scarred by conflict. Victor's time in Mauthausen broke his spirit. He saw his life's work twisted into tools of war, and the destruction of his prototypes at the war's end left him with little to show for his efforts. When the Allies liberated Austria in 1945, Russian and American forces seized his papers and models, suspecting military applications. The Americans briefly detained him, but finding no threat, released him. Penniless and exhausted, Victor returned to a ravaged Austria, determined to rebuild. His health was failing, his savings were gone, and his country lay in ruins. Yet, his passion for water and implosion burned brighter than ever. He focused on agricultural innovations, designing vortex-based irrigation systems that revitalized soil. Farmers who adopted his methods reported bumper crops, but the scientific establishment ignored him, labeling his work unproven. Victor's isolation grew, but his belief in his mission never wavered. This resilience carried him toward one final chance to bring his vision to the world, though fate had other plans. In 1958, a glimmer of hope appeared. American entrepreneurs invited Victor to Texas, promising to fund his trout turbine and bring clean energy to the world. At 73, frail but optimistic, Victor traveled with his son, Walter, carrying plans and prototypes. The deal seemed perfect, a chance to prove his theories on a global stage. But something was wrong. The investors demanded full ownership of his patents, refusing to let him retain control. Victor, sensing betrayal, resisted. They want my soul, not my engine, he told Walter. The strain was too much. After months of negotiations, the deal collapsed. Victor returned to Austria empty-handed, his health deteriorating. Five days later, on September 25, 1958, he died in Linz, whispering, they took everything from me. His prototypes vanished and his papers were scattered or lost. The strange water engine, once poised to change the world, faded into obscurity. But even in death, Victor's ideas refused to be silenced, sparking a quiet revolution that continues to inspire. Victor Schauberger died believing his work was lost, but his ideas have quietly endured. In the decades since his death, scientists have begun to validate his theories. Studies in biomimicry echo his call to copy nature, while research into structured water and vortex dynamics supports his claims about water's vitality. Companies like Flasca and Mayu Water cite Victor as inspiration for their vortex-based products, and environmentalists see his vision of sustainable energy as a blueprint for fighting climate change. Yet Victor's story is also a cautionary tale. His marginalization shows how revolutionary ideas can be silenced by dogma, profit, or war. Today, as we face dwindling resources and ecological collapse, his message is more urgent than ever. Work with nature, not against it. His trout turbine, though never fully realized, hints at a future where clean energy flows as freely as a river. So what can we do? Explore Victor's writings, like Living Water or Nature as Teacher support innovators who follow his principles, and above all, question the systems that prioritize profit over the planet. Victor Schauberger was a scientist, a dreamer, and a warrior for the Earth. His strange water engine may be gone, but its spirit lives in every stream, every vortex, every person who dares to listen to nature.